look at pop culture where we are going to talk about Try Guys. Now, I don't know whether you've heard of the Try Guys. They are famous YouTubers and, and influencers where they have about 8 million followers or subscribers on YouTube. So very influential, very popular YouTube channel where they produce a lot of fun, comedic uh, content and where they just they just uh, very like kind of skit showish kind of and just talk about a whole bunch of different things. Now, unfortunately, recently, one of the four uh, creators or actually owners of the of the organization was found to have had an affair. Actually, I was speaking to someone recently, Doctor Rod, that they said, "Well, the affair is affair is actually a, a soft way of saying it." Uh, adultery. Unfortunately, we've tried to soften it. Um, he was caught in adultery with, unfortunately, one of his younger employees. And the way that the other three creators or owners of the organization actually responded to it, I believe is very wise. So to give you a few little, like, few little facts about it, um, they, they found out about the infidelity through you know, a, a photo that was shared. Now, they didn't release or announce the, the situation until about three or four weeks later. So initially, they were criticized by the time that they actually took to, to respond to the situation. But in reality, they were actually seeking wisdom. And they were getting advice from lawyers and HR experts and, and anyone that they could to try to get advice from the, the right people on how to approach it right because they didn't want to rush the situation and they wanted to make the right decision. And so in the end, uh, they, they, they got the right advice. They took time. They put a well-scripted and well-structured video together. We'll add the link below if you want to, want to see how they actually responded, which I actually think was very wise because it was very heartfelt. You could tell that, that their hearts were broken in this situation, but they were taking both smart business decision, but also caring about their employees as well and caring about their followers and, and their greater community. So, Dr. Rod, what are, what are your thoughts about how they actually approach this situation? Because some people don't usually handle these situations quite well. They get quite gossipy. They get, you know, spread rumors and, and it gets quite nasty and, and, and vicious and everything. What's, what's your take on how they actually responded to this crisis of one of their key members actually, you know, having an affair or committing adultery? Well, look, I, I think one of the most important things was they demonstrated authenticity mm. and integrity because they actually stood up for the values that they purport to believe in. That's really good. And that's really, really important during mm. a period of, of crisis when some calamity happens uh, to an organisation. So I think first and foremost, they demonstrated authenticity and integrity, and that stood in their favour. Second, there was no contest about the facts yeah. of the situation. That's really important as well. And uh, then I agree with what, what you said, Craig. There was a delay between their discovery of what had been going on and a public statement. But during that period of time, which was in fact relatively short, it was less than, than two weeks, they sought advice. They sought legal advice, as you said, they sought HR advice. That's really important when you're looking at an outcome leading to the dismissal of somebody from a leadership position. So yeah. they had enough wisdom to realise that they couldn't necessarily handle this on their own without getting expert input, which they did. Yeah. And once they had gathered that expert input, they then made the decision to go public and explain clearly, one, what had happened, and two, what their response was. Yeah, that's good. And really, they didn't leave any room for argument, debate, and they really didn't leave any room for criticism either, except by somebody who might not have agreed with the values upon which their business was built. Yeah. But they certainly couldn't be accused of acting in any way that was contrary to, to their values. And so I, I think that is one of the great strengths of their response. It was totally consistent with who they say they are. Yeah, that's good. Making sure we stay consistent with what we, you know, our, our core values. 
but taking that time to seek advice because too often in these situations, I mean, look, unfortunately, we as leaders will come across a time where one of our key members, maybe a key leadership or key in our organization, does do something that's out of line with our values. And maybe it may not be infidelity, but maybe it's something else that's outside of our key values. And sometimes we may, like we've spoken about in previous episodes, look at the performance and just kind of ignore it because of their performance. But obviously that's not the right, not the right way. You know, we, we can respond emotionally and, and it be, be more of an emotional thing. But you, could, you can tell that these guys, although that they're hurt, they went to the experts. During these times, it's important to go outside of, because number one, it's a HR issue, right? Number one, it is a HR issue in firing someone. Make sure you don't rapidly fire someone without the right HR advice, because you could find yourself in a lot of you know, hot water, so to speak. But also going to that external advice covers you legally from their business standpoint because they're business partners, HR standpoint because it was an employee. But also it's someone who's externally, not emotionally involved. It's always really powerful to be able to speak to someone else who's not wrapped up in the emotion of the situation and get caught up in, in responding emotionally where they can respond a little bit more practically. Now, what, another thing that they did at great expense, and this is one thing that, that we as leaders need to be very, like, we need to be ready to make the sacrifice because sometimes making the right decision will cost us money, will cost us a lot of money. And we need to be ready. We need to make the decision that we as leaders are ready to make the hard decisions to, that will cost us money, cost the organization money, cost us personally money to make the right decisions. Because they made the decision to remove Ned, who was the, their partner, remove him from all of their content, remove him from their merchandise that already purchased a whole bunch of merchandise for, for him, re, practically just threw away that merchandise, digitally removed him from everything, which would have cost them a lot of time and money to get that done. There was a lot of videos that had already been recorded that were brand deals that they had to scrap and they lost the money for that. But they, once again, stuck to their values and said, the value, our, sticking to our core values was so much more important than the money that we would have gained. Dr. Rod, making those tough decisions financially can be tough, especially like, Let's be honest, a lot of us will be in that situation to make that decision when it will really cost us. Not, not just like, oh, okay, we're going to lose a percentage, whatever. No, sometimes it may cause us to lose everything and go backwards. What's your take on being able to make that, that right decision in that moment that will cost us heavily? Yeah, look, before you take on a leadership position or before you establish a business, I think you have to determine that you will do the right thing because it is the right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, that should be your byline. And uh, it may and often will actually cost you financially to do the right thing. You know, th there are no guarantees that doing the right thing will boost the bottom line. Uh -huh. That's never guaranteed. No. It might, and I know academics who have tried very hard to demonstrate statistically that when you do the right thing, it actually boosts the bottom line. But uh, look, there are no guarantees at the outset. I, I just think that you need to make up your mind before you even get into a situation so that you automatically respond. You do the right thing because it is the right thing to do, not because there may be some gain in the long term. Obviously, you hope to exist long term, you hope to be profitable long term, but nevertheless, you do the right thing simply because it is the right thing to do. Well, I heard something in a sermon I was actually listening to today about um, you know, the, the, the benefit, the long term benefit. You have to look at the eternal benefit of making the right decision because it will be profitable for us 
in the long, long, long term, eternally, <laughs> yes, to make the right decision. You're right. But, uh, You're right. but yes, maybe yeah, our absolutely. time here on Earth, it may not. But, I mean, I... I I think I would much prefer and it, that it's you know sleeping good at night. You know that it's it's touted as a it's a it's a cliche statement, but we, we as leaders need to. I mean we 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 will be called to account. We will be yes, called to we account. Will. We will. And mm. and so I want to be able to stand in front of Jesus and go. You know what? I stewarded it all. I made as, as best decisions as I could that were for uh, the kingdom and not just for my back pocket. Mm. And so. You will be faced with a crisis as a leader. One of your team members may do something that is inexcusable, inexcusable, and you'll have to make the right decision. How do we make that right decision? As Dr. Rod said, we need to predetermine what our decision is going to be. How can we do that? Through understanding what our core values are, then we just make our decisions straight through our, our core values. We don't necessarily have to try to think of every scenario and how we're going to respond to every scenario. Make sure you know what your core values are and then just run every decision through those core values. If it doesn't align with them, it's a no. It, it, it's that simple. And please seek external advice. Seek the right professional advice for the situation so that you can have wisdom, external wisdom that isn't emotional, but also uh, protects you legally uh, as well as um, with, with, with wisdom as well. You've just been watching an excerpt from our leadership podcast. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And hey, put a comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this video. And if you'd like to watch the full episode, please check out our channel. And while you're there, we'd be honored if you subscribed. Thank you.